welcome to Bank of America Arena in Seattle, Washington, on the campus of the University of Washington. It's packed in gymnastics as the 19th ranked Oregon State Beavers visit their Northwest rivals, the Washington Huskies. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Akamian, along with Judy Corwin. Welcome back to the Pac-10 on Fox Sports Net. Last week, we saw Oregon State put up a tremendous number against that unbelievable UCLA team, and now two teams trying to up their regional qualifying score. The Beavers and the Huskies, they're both rooting for big numbers today. Well, tonight's meet is uh, down the home stretch for both teams, and it's not so much a matter of who wins the meet, but who scores well. So both teams are motivated to do their very best. And, of course, the Beavers put up their seventh-best score in school history last week against UCLA. And one Beaver who's coming along very nicely is Annie Campbell, back-to-back -back 39s in the all-around. Annie is uh, really in her stride right now. She's ready to throw a more difficult ball tonight. She's done two 39s. She's headed for a great regional national championship meet. This is a very young Washington Husky team for Coach Bob Levesque this year. Seven freshmen on this squad, but they go back to the veterans when they need some numbers. And one upperclassman who's really stepping up is junior Stacy Wong, injured for much of the first two years of her collegiate career. Now she's ranked in the top ten on bars. Well, Stacy's gone all around this year after not competing for her freshman or her sophomore season, and Bob Levesque has a brand new star on his team. We'll see Stacy do very well on bars, which is her favorite event. Well, as always, the magic number in college gymnastics is the number 10. And Oregon State's Katrina Severin hit that mark last week. Perfection on the ball against UCLA. Can she do it again in Seattle? Back with more from Heckhead after this timeout. In 1990, the beautifully renovated Bank of America Arena at Heck Edmondson Pavilion, site of today's Pac-10 gymnastics meet between the Beavers and the Huskies. Well, that national poll starts getting to be more and more interesting viewing each week, Judy, because those average scores start to give you an idea what the regional qualifying marks are going to be. But sometimes the poll is a little misleading because some teams that have put up good numbers early aren't necessarily going to fare well when it comes time for regionals and certainly a national. No, that's exactly right. I think this poll is going to change quite a bit as we get down the home stretch of the season. And for Oregon State, they need to get into that top 18. Those are the teams that are seeded into the national, regional and national championships. So that's really important for them. The Huskies need to break the top 25. They want to go to regionals and have a shot at getting back into the national. And of course, to get that, it's the regional qualifying score. Top 18 gets to go to a regional somewhere. Everyone else has to get a high average score. So for Bob Levesque and his team, and for that matter, for the Beavers, putting up the highest possible score in meets like today is very, very important. It's all a numbers game. And uh, with the top 18 being seeded out, they're only taking three teams into our regional competition from regionals, or from our region. So if regionals were held today, we wouldn't be in regionals. And we're right on the cusp of getting in, and I'm, I'm not really worried about it. But the thing is, is that it's not your placement. In fact, I told Coastal one a few minutes ago, you could technically lose every meet uh, all year long and be national champion. I don't know. I guess we all, you know, want to push each other, especially those that are closer to that top 18. You know, the, the rest of the schools want those schools to do well so that more of uh, more schools have opportunities to compete in, in regionals. So, yeah, you do. You want everyone to do well because hopefully those scores will bump up everyone else's scores. The truth of the matter is both these teams are competing against themselves to better their scores. Well, the spectacle is on the floor here at Bank of America Arena. Bob Levesque and his Washington Huskies being introduced amongst the smoke and the lights in the spotlight. Let's take a look at today's order of events. Traditional dual meet format. The home team, the Huskies, start on the vault, go to the bars. They'll reverse with Oregon State. And, of course, the Huskies will go beam in the third rotation and finish up on the floor. Both teams on the floor ready for the first event. When we come back, we'll get things started. The Beavers, the Huskies, Pac-10 Gymnastics on Fox Sports Net. Lana Pisuk, one of the Husky veterans. It is time to begin the first rotation. 19th ranked Oregon State and the University of Washington from the B of A Arena in Seattle. For the first rotation, the host Washington Huskies will lead it off on the vault. They set the school record on this event against Oregon State in a big meet here back in 1997. And the senior, Lana Pisuk, will lead it off. 
On the bars for Oregon State, Sonny Maduna, the junior, leads off the Beaver Bar rotation. And a big finish expected here from Liz Gilson and Stephanie Baikowski. So, Judy, here we go. First vaulter set to go for Washington. Just a moment, Lana Pisu will step up there. We talk about getting off to a good start in these meets. Uh, you always talk about having your best your best performer go last, but the first performer in a rotation, I think especially in the first rotation, is critical. Very important because this has to be one of the most consistent gymnasts. This gymnast starts off your entire rotation. If this gymnast isn't consistent, you can't count on him not to fall. That can be critical for your score because the judges build from there. Scores build from that first competitor. Well, these two teams have faced each other quite a bit over the years, of course. Being uh, local rivals, the Beavers have dominated. In fact, they've won the last three. Last year, they hooked up in the Pac-10s in the regionals and of course in that dual meet in Corvallis. The Husky school record though was set against the Beavers at a, just a landslide here back in 1997. Husky set school records in two different events and that best mark ever of 196.775. Take a look at the Beaver head coach. There is Tanya Chaplin, former Husky assistant coach. She got started here as an assistant for Bob Levesque for seven years before taking over the Beaver program. And of course, uh, set quite a, a standard at UCLA. And there's Bob Levesque, his 10th season in Seattle, 119 career victories. And has really taken this program to uh, new heights, all of its heights of the past uh, decade. And here is Lana Pisuk starting things off. And you talk about your steady gymnast. Here is the senior. This is not her strongest event, but you put her leading off the ball because she is gonna, she is gonna stick a ball. She's gonna attempt one she can make and she is gonna stick it. Well, it, Lana says it, that if she could change anything in her life, it would be consistency on vault. She's great all the way around, and this is the event that worries her the most. Her vault is a Yurchenko. And hit it. Ground off vault, laid out position, lands straight facing the horse. It's valued at a 9.8. She'd have to twist this vault in order to get a 10.0 value. She got good body position in the air. She could use a little more flight, takes a tiny hop on landing that will cost her just a couple of tenths. Leading off on the bars for Oregon State, Sonny Maduna, the junior from Cole, Nebraska, Dynamo Gymnastics. 9725, a couple of times already. Well, Sonny really wants to stick this routine. She's had a little bit of problems through the season. And she's the first one up. It's really important that she hits. There's some nice twisting moves, handstands on the uneven bar, high bar. There's her release move, which is a Takatsha. She fell on that the last meet, so she is going strong to finish. She wants to hit good handstand positions, warming up for that dismount, which is a toe on front off, a little low on landing, but she had a good starting routine for the Beavers, and she's overcome something, and that's not falling. Well, last week, Sonny, stuck in that leadout spot, struggled a bit against UCLA. This is a good first routine for her. Good dismount, tiny hop on landing. Oh, Maduna gets Oregon State started off on the uh, uneven bars. Down to the vault runway, Emily Pritchard, freshman. Nearby Buckley, wait him up, Rennie. Emily's also done a Yurchenko vault. This one now is valued at 10.0. She's twisted the vault as well as somersaulting the vault. We saw Lana just somersault the vault in the laid out position. Emily, we see her do a full turn before landing. She has a big step on landing and a little bit of execution error, but she has excellent flight and she landed that vault. She's valued at a 10.0. And it's, it's difficult for the gymnast to uh, find a vault valued at 10.0 start value. That's always a goal. Now her season best at 9.675. Probably improved on that. A piece of first score at 9.675. Out of the bars, and here's the Beavers only all around her in this meet. Annie Campbell, big rooting section for her. She's from Everett, just up the road. Her club gymnastics at leading edge up in Bellingham. Annie's really come on in this event. She has a very difficult routine. Straddle over immediately up to the high bar. There's her release move. So far, so good. 
big swing. She's very strong on this event. These are front giants. Her hands are turning out a Healy twirl. Her hand positions are what make that part of the routine so difficult. Now she's setting up for a dismount. Double back in the tuck position. Excellent routine from Annie Campbell. She had good swing, good um, dismount. There's her Healy twirl, twirl into an immediate release onto the low bar. The Very gymnast smooth. has to release twice. Here comes her dismount. A double back flyway in the tuck position. Tiny hop on landing. Diane Campbell, that's a good start for Oregon State in the bar. It's not been their strongest event this year. Well, we've had two hits. Important for those scores to keep going up. Jessica Shadler now on the ball. Emily Pritchard, the previous Husky ball for a 985. That's her career best. Beautiful body position at the handspring front pike. It's valued at a 9.9. .9. She has wonderful flight through the air. Nice body position. She's way far away from the horse. She has a tiny step on the landing. Other than that, that's a beautiful vault. A little knee bend. Excellent vault. Both these teams hitting in the first rotation. Very good start. The numbers looking good early on. We go back to the bars. Lindsay Nelson. Freshman from Colorado, sprained her ankle, and season opener has been battling back. She's on the verge of going all around. Had a great meet against UCLA. Previous Beaver scores on the bars, a 9.675 from Maduna, career high. Campbell, a 9.75. And now Lindsay Nelson. Lindsay's getting more consistent on this event. She's getting stronger and working her way back into the all around. There's a beautiful release move, like a reverse tech. She's way above the bar. Working the bar as well. She's been on both bars now. Nice giant circle. She sets up for the dismount. Double back. Perfect landing. Lindsay swung on those bars very well. May she made it look effortless. Look how high she is above the bar before she recaptures it. And then on her dismount, building up her swing, double back, no steps on landing, that's perfect. And of course, this is an event. You can still work on this with a bad ankle. You can do all your work up on the bars. So this is where Lindsay had the least disruption of her training after the sprained ankle. Runway. Junior Stacy Wong, they're like battling back from injuries. Knee last year, first two seasons. Didn't get to perform much, but she's really stepping up this year. Top Husky Balter this year at 985 at Arizona State. Now Stacy's going to do a hamstring front hike also, but she's going to twist it before landing. Position. We saw a nice tuck position with the legs over, perfect landing. Stacy wants to be a physical therapist. And with all the injuries that she's had, I'm sure she would know how to uh, bring an athlete back from injury. Bob Levesque likes that. So does Dana Durant, Husky assistant. This is a great start for Washington, sticking these vaults. Shadler had a career high, Pritchard a career high, and Wong getting in that category as well. See four really strong vaults from the Huskies. That sets them up for their last two competitors. And we're going to go back to the bars now. Laura Degenhardt, senior from Salem, Oregon, has some family and friends here today. Coming off a career high equaling 9875 last week against the Bruins. Laura worked really hard on this event. She's a great tumbler, a great vaulter. And on even bars is the event she works on most. Not as natural. Good body position. There's a nice release move up to the high bar. 
body positions, nice handstand and execution on her uneven bar routine. So the Beavers putting up some good numbers on the bars. The Huskies, though, tremendous on the vault so far. Through four vaulters, that's three career highs for Pritchard, Shadler, and look what Wong just put up, a 9-9-5. Trying to keep that going. Freshman Molly Seaman from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Clubbed at the Bama Bounders. And getting used to college gymnastics will eventually be an all-arounder for Bob LeVette. She's going to do a handspring front pike. Good body position. Not as much flight as some of her teammates, and she had to take a step on the landing because she wasn't quite as high and quite as far. Watch her hit the horse. Pike position. She's rotating down into the mat, finding herself forward. She has to take that step. That vault is valued at a 9.9. .9. She's got to twist it in order to get a 10-0 value. Go back to the bars now, and Elizabeth Jilson set to go. This is her specialty. 9.95, which is the best, uh, equals the best performance by any beaver on the bars this year against Arizona. Well, Elizabeth works the uneven bars with Grace. If you can work an event with Grace, she does it. Very nice movement up to the high bar. We hit circle with her giant turning into an eagle grip in her release move, and she was just too far back. She, instead of shooting up, she shot back, and there was no way she could regrasp that high bar. I think she knew it as she was going into that move. Now she, the key is for her to re-grasp, to get her swing back. And we see Coach Dick Foxel helping her back up to the high bar. Finish her routine strong, get up and dismount. Giant circle. And her double back flyaway. She's a little low on landing, felt herself falling forward, so she had to take that step. So that's the routine that the Beavers are going to have to throw out. Here you can see she's in an eagle grip. She's just way far away from the bar, and there's no way she can even attempt to recatch it. So the Beavers had to take a fall on this event last week. Elizabeth Jilson not happy with herself. Now Mandy Klug, senior from Clarkston, Washington, competing in three events. She's vaulted and beamed throughout her career. Great leader on this club. She's a co-captain for the second consecutive year. Mandy's going to do a vault that's valued at 9.9. Handspring .9. front, a tuck position with a half twist. Right there. Good landing. She had good flight. Turn was a little bit late. And she had to take one step on the dismount. Big Good tuck position, that tiny step on the landing. That vault is valued at a 9.9. .9. Very good run for the Husky. Seaman, the previous vaulter, scored a 9.775, which equaled her career best. So four career bests in this rotation, and the Huskies are chasing that school record. Now, the final bar competitor, and a little pressure now on Stephanie Bykowski. Jilson scored just a 9.05 with the fall, which Bykowski is capable of a 10 routine. But she took a fall against UCLA, very uncharacteristic for her. And now with one fall already in the vent, you think the, the mental starts creeping in? Well, the pressure's on, and the difficult part for Stephanie is not only does she have to hit so the Beavers don't count a fall, but she also has to regroup and start the scoring process at the game. 
She has a difficult routine. She has tough release moves in this routine. And her hand changes and handstand positions also make it very risky, so it's easy to miss. Stephanie is senior. She goes two events, which is uneven bars and balance beam. She's a specialist on those two. And she anchors both rotations for Oregon State. There's her straddle over. Nice handstand position. We see her recraft the bar. The swing is good. There's her release move, and she hit it. She is relieved. The giant swing, she's revving up for that dismount. Full in back, double back. She had one step on landing. Good routine for Stephanie. And Oregon State needed her to hit. Here we'll see her release move. It's good swing, that's eight. Somersault. Set up for her dismount, which is a full twisting, double back, one step on landing. And the smile tells it all. Bikowski comes back from disappointment a week ago and bails the Beavers out in the bars. So one rotation is in the books, and the Huskies have put up their season best on the vault. Back-to-back -back five career-high performances. Klug wrapped it up with her 985. And for Oregon State, a very solid performance on the uneven bars as Stephanie Bykowski finished the job with that last performance. So both these teams hitting their routines to get things started. The Huskies super on the ball. One rotation in the books. We're back with rotation number two in a moment. We begin the second rotation from Seattle. The Washington Huskies with a one-tenth lead thanks to a season high in the vault. And that's a very good start, Judy, to hit the vault. And everybody hit the vault. We had with one step and landing in six vaults. It was a great run for uh, University of Washington on the vault. And Coach Levesque was very excited. Now it is the Beavers' turn as we take a look at the second rotation lineups. Bob Levesque, he's always smiling, but he's really smiling after the first rotation. Tanya Chaplin now ready to see the Beavers on the vault. Here's how the second rotation will go. Elaine Yoder, the freshman, who's uh, had a couple of leadoff roles this year. Sonny Maduna, Lindsey Nelson, Campbell, Degenhardt, and Katrina Severin. And for Washington on the bars, Jessica Shadler will lead off. Stacy Wong will wrap things up. And Emily Pritchard again. Keep an eye on this freshman in the all-around. Here's Valter for Oregon State. Elaine Yoder, true freshman, Wilson High in Portland. Seeing a lot of action the last three weeks because of all the injuries that Oregon State suffered. Elaine did a handspring front tuck, valued at a 9.8. Good vault for the first, hit, first competitor for Oregon State. Got a little bit of execution problems. Slight hop on landing. Remember, Oregon State has lost... Joe Lopez and Tanya Riccioli for the year, both with uh, Achilles problems. And uh, that has forced Yoder to take part in three different events. She probably wouldn't even be competing this season. Oregon State, uh, Washington leads off. One of their seniors, Jessica Shadler. Pac-10 all-academic team. Jessica on the uneven bars. Not very simply. Hip up immediately up to the high bar. There's a nice release move, a reverse hack, but she had a knee break. Bent her knee. And that hurt her slight, slightly. Giant circle, she's setting up for her dismount. The flyaway in the pike position. Jessica's execution and her flight wasn't quite as good as we've seen from the Huskies in the past. She looked Here's a little low on the dismount. Low on the dismount. Really had to fight for that landing. But did a good job getting her feet in. Back to the vault runway. Sonny Maduna, the junior. 
9.65. Her career best, done that twice already this year. That was a good performance on the bars from Beaver's leadoff performer there. Has her eyes. She too is doing a handspring tuck. Valued at 9.8. She tucked a little bit early, but she had good height off of the horse and a good landing. Congratulations from assistant coach Michael Chaplin. Works for the Beaver Vaulters. Watch she tucks as she's right on the horse in the air rather than waiting until she's flying. Well, she looked like she might have had her steps off a bit, too. She was slowing as she got to the board. That could have been. But a good recovery. And is able to land the routine properly. Now we go to the bars. For the first time, we see Danny Medlin. True freshman from Redmond, Washington, just across the lake. Clubbed at Cascade Elite. She, of course, got her hooked up formally with uh, Coach Frank Lee, who is now the Husky assistant coach. There are a number of Husky teams from the Washington area, Seattle area. Dana working very well. Nice giant swing with full turns into an immediate re release move. And we saw her cross her hands. A mixed grip is what that, that's called. She'll set up for her dismount. Double back flyway. Perfect landing. And Coach Lee is ecstatic. Here's the release move for Medlin. So watch Danny's hands. As she, see how she crosses them as she goes into that wow. somersault. And her dismount, she has a perfect landing, building up some speed, double back, no step. And only her second performance collegiately. The things to come for Danny Medlin, one of seven Husky freshmen in action. To the ball runway, Lindsay Nelson, the freshman season high just last week. Beavers have put up two career highs already. Yoder a 9.65, Maduna a 9.7. So Lindsay Nelson has to keep that ball rolling. Lindsay's doing a Yurchenko ball. Yeah. Nice body position. The round off to an immediate layout off the horse. She didn't twist it, so it's valued at a 9.8. It's our grimace a little on landing. They see that taped left ankle. That's the one she injured earlier in the year. She could have pushed off the horse just a little harder and that caused her to land harder on her legs and that's why we see her tendering that foot just a bit. You know, speaking of Achilles, both Huskies and Beavers have gymnasts out with Achilles problems this year. Out of the bars, where Medlin just put up a career high 9.85. Shadler got him started with a 9.75. Here's Kim Clausen, her first performance of the day. True freshman from nearby Monroe, Washington. Another cascade performance. She does a hex mount. Goes immediately to the high bar. Her Jaeger somersault, a first release move. Giant circle. Back to the low bar with a half twist. Ideally, she wants to hit that in handstand position, but it's difficult to do when you're flying between the bars. Set up for her dismount, a double back flyway. Good landing. Yeah, these two teams came to play. Here's Klassen's release. This is her only event, by the way, so she can bring it all right here. There was a Jaeger somersault. She straddled it and re the bar. And her dismount is double back. In the tuck position. No steps on landing. And smiles all around for Kim Clausen. Go to the vault runway. Here's Annie Campbell. All arounding today. Equaled her season high against the Bruins last week. So far for the Beavers, three career highs in this rotation. That might be another one. <laughs> nine sevens her career best. Nice ball for Annie. A Yurchenko vault. It's valued at a nine eight. I know she wants to twist it. She's been working a twist, but it must not have warmed up as well as she wanted. Coach Chaplin said, let's stick with what we do best. 
Nice laid out position in the air. Tiny hop on landing. Again, that vault valued at a 9.8. And we'll keep an eye on Annie's number because she's in the all around as well, battling a piece of Wong and Pritchard. Speaking of Lana Pisuk, here she is up on the bars. The 9-9 already this year against Boise State. Plus, in the previous bar performer, a career high 9-9. So the Huskies, two career highs in this rotation. Lana is strong on the uneven bars. There's the release move. A reverse hack. Nice handstand position. Setting up for the disc now. And she does a double, it. double back, full and double back. Solid landing. You see her do two somersaults and a full twist before landing. Tough bar set for Lana Apisuk. Apisuk, fifth in the pac tens as an all-arounder a year ago. Made it to the NCAAs in 1999. So we go back to the vault. Let's get you caught up on Oregon State so far. Campbell, a season best. The last performer after three career eyes for Yoder, Maduna, and Nelson. And that brings on the senior, Laura Dagenhart, who's ranked 19th in the country. Laura loves to fly, and this is one of the events that she can demonstrate what she can do. Her vault. Hamstring cross tight with a half twist, valued at 10.0. She had a good body position, a little bit short on her height and her flight. Caused her to have to take a tiny step on the landing. And not the best fault that we've seen Lara do. She'd have pushed off the horse just a little harder or gotten a little farther. The Huskies have another good run going. Look at their bars through four. Medlin, Clausen, and Apisuk now. All career highs. Apisuk at 9925. And that brings on Emily Pritchard, the freshman from White River. She has uh, been a very pleasant surprise. Highest performing freshman. They're letting her all around. Seven freshmen on the team. Not everyone's going to get him a lineup every night. But Pritchard's managed to get the job done. Well, Allison Booth is out with an Achilles injury this season. And so Emily has had to step up and play an all-around role even as a freshman. And now, next up for the University now Pritchard's set to go. Started all around in several meets ago against Arizona. It's a nice move to the high bar. Setting up giant circles. Eagle grip. And her release move. A delt chest. A somersault with a half twist. Back over the low bar and had an interesting half twist. Flair, not difficult, but very impressive to the judges. Her dismount, double back with the full twist. Get a tiny step on landing. Her release move. There we saw a half twist with a flare as she went down to the low bar. Something not done by too many college gymnasts. Her dismount, a double back with a full twist. Someone better check the Huskies' feet for Velcro today. They what? They are nailing these ones. Well, they've almost gone 12 for 12. To the vault now, the final Beaver performer, Katrina Severin, number two in the nation. Last week against UCLA, perfect 10. Let's see if she can match it. Nice ball for Katrina, but we saw that hop on the landing. That 
that's what she tries to avoid. Her vault valued at a 10.0, which she scored a 10.0 last time out. This time, good body position, but her momentum carried her forward, and she had to take the hop. It'll be a good number, but it won't be that 1-0. Trina Severin knows what she needs to do to get that number. And she will still finish out a strong run. Oregon State's had three career highs, two season highs in this rotation. And now we go back to the bars. Pritchard scored a 9.875. And here's Stacy Wong, 10th in the nation. This has been her specialty going back to her freshman year. Well, she's been injured, and so this is the one event that she could continue to work without having to uh, work on her ankle. But she's been injured in her knee. We saw a beautiful release move. There's a nice handstand with a full twist right in the handstand position. And she shoots to the low bar, and she hit that handstand position the second time around. Setting up for dismount. Double back. Pike layout position. She has a good bar set. Just good extensions on her handstand. Good body positions. Here we see her dismount. She does a pike and then a layout before landing. So Stacy Wong wraps it up for the Huskies. Washington very consistent. 12 for 12 to start this meet out. The Beavers not too shabby on the vault as well. So we're about halfway through this one, and these teams are going to get what they want. Hey, coming up tonight, it's the 11 o'clock regional sports report. That means home team news, local stories, regional highlights. It's tonight at 11, your regional sports report, the Northwest Edition, right here on Fox Sports Net. The results of the second rotation and another season high team number for Oregon State. As the Beavers put together three career highs, two season highs, and Katrina Semper, not bad, 9875. For the Huskies, three career highs in the middle of that rotation. And Washington continues to lead as we are halfway through this competition. The Huskies and the Beavers, it's all purple at the Bank of America Arena. Halfway through this one, much more college gymnastics to come. Halfway through this one at Bank of America Arena, and do not adjust your set. The Washington Huskies with a 7-10 sweep over Oregon State after two rotations. And Judy Corwin, a lot of that is because the Huskies simply have hit every routine. 12 of 12, that is fantastic. And they have to be psyched over it. I mean, to come back uh, two meets in a row and do so well. That's a great showing on their part on Bolton Bar. Washington certainly did that against Arizona last weekend. We talked about setting the tone, and Huskies have done that from the very beginning of these rotations. And you look at the all-around battle right now. We thought Oregon State's Andy Campbell, who's pretty good at the all-around, might come in and uh, sort of uh, teach a lesson. But look at this, Stacey Wong, 99 after two events. She anchored that uh, bar routine with a big number for her. And Emily Pritchard, the freshman in there in second right now. Well, all of the Huskies, they've pushed each other. Stacy Pritchard, we've seen it happen. Annie, her best events are yet to come. Beeman Floor. Well, we talked about that home team momentum. Will it help drive the scores up for both teams? Already off to a good start for the Washington Huskies. But we're only halfway through this one. But third rotation still to come. Huskies on the beam. OSU on the floor. After two rotations, Washington with a 7 tenths lead over Oregon State in Pac-10 gymnastics action. Tune in tomorrow at 7 o'clock for Northwest Sports Tonight. It's presented by our friends at Verizon. Find out about all the issues, the stories, the headlines that affect the Northwest local teams as well as features on the entire local sports scene. It's Northwest Sports Tonight presented by Verizon tomorrow at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Two more rotations to go. Here's the Huskies getting ready on the beam right now. We'll show you the third rotation when we come back. Ready to begin the third rotation, Oregon State and Washington. The Huskies, as we said, very good number through two rotations. So how will it all stack up in the third, you ask? Well, University of Washington will be up on the balance beam. Tanya Powers, true freshman. 
Leading it off, Emmy Lee Pritchard, Molly Seaman, Mandy Clue, senior, will wrap things up. And on the floor for Oregon State, there's Elaine Yoder, another leadoff spot for her. Get our first look at Marisa Brew, and of course Katrina Severin and Laura Degenard, some outstanding routines, wrap things up. So to the beam we go, and here's Tanya Powers, Texas T, one of those seven freshmen from Tech from First Texas. This is her one event right now. Had a bad ankle injury before the season affected her conditioning and preparation. Tanya opened with a very difficult mount, and there was her tumbling series. She had a major off balance on the mount but then got it together and was able to complete the tumble. This meet is so close, the balancing could be a key event for both teams. She looks steady, nice creative, unique forward roll. Not difficult, but she added a little leg flare to it. Back hamstring to a jump. Remember that the gymnast must combine acrobatic moves and dance moves. You must connect them together without a pause in order to get credit. So we saw her do an example of that. Two jumps in a row, one that she turned. She's close to finish and getting ready for her dismount. Flip loss to a gainer with a full twist. Except for that mount where she had a major off balance. It was a good routine and a good starter for the Huskies. And again, this is, a, this is a tough way to go on, too. Oh, very tough. She does a round off, almost like she's vaulting onto the beam. No hands into a layout position and a major off balance. She almost fell, so the judges will need to deduct two tenths or more on that off balance. She had a good dismount, which was a gainer with a full twist. On his season best, a 9.625 down in California. Now the Oregon State Beavers always some exciting floor routines choreographed by the head coach, Tanya Chaplin. And here's the freshman, Elaine Yoder, set her career best just last week in 9 8. Elaine is very ballerina like on the floor exercise. She has a lot of classical dance background. And that comes out in this particular floor routine. Even her choice of music is a little more classical. Well, that little piano kind of fakes you out, takes you back to the old days when it's all you could use on the floor is piano. Right. There was a two and a half twist for her opening tumbling line. A little off balance coming out of it, but not a major break. Elaine's gained lots of confidence in this um, routine over the season as a freshman coming in. And to be in the first position for Oregon State is a credit to her ability to hit every meet. She's moving very well to the music, which is all part of the choreography personality that the gym shows on floor exercise. This is the place where they can be showmen. Last tumbling line, double twist, strong finish, and a good exercise for the Beavers for their first gymnast up. Music selection is so important. You might listen to that and say, well, that's not the dramatic music you'll hear Utah use at the championships, but it's what fits the gyms. That's correct. And there's her opening tumbling line. She's a good twister on floor exercise, had a slight off balance. And, of course, we've seen her compete the last two weeks. You can just see the confidence in her routines as she's continued to advance. Emily Pritchard again. Talk about a freshman composed. Number two in the all-around right now. Number 985 and 9875. Huskies are racking up the career highs. Tanya Powers open with a 9.65 on the beam. Here's Emily Pritchard. Another tough mount from the Huskies. 
a lot of times gymnasts will pick a simple mount, something where they can just get up and be assured and be up there, but both Husky gymnasts have opened with difficult mounts. Hers was a front tuck somersault, and she had a slight off balance. She's into the routine and moving well. There's her tumbling series, a round off into a layout step out. You'll see the gymnasts put tumbling moves together, two or three of them. There was a side switch leap. And she knows she's through the midway point on her routine and the difficult tumbling is out of the way. A jump, series together, and she goes into a hip circle on the balance beam, a move normally seen on the uneven bars. It's not difficult, but fun to do. Well, it gets the judges' attention, a little variety. She's going to set up for her dismount. Round off, full twisting layout. She had a solid routine. She didn't have anything spectacular in that routine, but very solid. And again, because this meet is so close, that is important. There's her tumbling move, which is a round off to a layout step out. She had a slight check on the landing. Husky's throwing down the gauntlet here in the beam, hitting the routines early. It's going to be a tough final rotation for Oregon State as they play catch up. Let me go back to the floor now for Oregon State. Sunny Baduna, a junior. This is her third and final performance. Had her season high a couple of weeks ago in a home meet against Boise State. Elaine Yoder, the first Beaver performer, scored a 9.75. Well, this is definitely Sunny's best event. She's a strong tumbler, which we'll see. Good double back. She was a little low on the landing. And this music is very dynamic, rhythmic, and demonstrates her power. A little jazz. A roaring 20s jazz. So they played that in Nebraska. There's her twisting tumbling. One and a half twist. Plays to the music. And that leap series gave her some special connections. Which is a requirement for the gymnast. The gymnasts must put together dance elements and acrobatic elements, and they get bonus for those connections. Oh, that deep breath before she does her last tumbling line. Front layout to a front tuck. Again, a little low on her somersault. And Maduna is done for the day. Three solid routines. Well, she's here all three of her events today. Here's her first tumbling run. She does a double back in a pike position, a little low on landing, so she has to take a big step back to catch herself. And Oregon State likes the start of the floor routine. Always a strong event for the Beavers. We go to the beam. Freshman Molly Seaman. Career high, 9-8 against Arizona on the 18th last weekend. Another mount. Another wow. big mount from the Huskies and she hit it. Oh. She was so excited she almost lost her seat footing on the jump. Now that was on the other side of the beam. Did the judges maybe even see that? Well, there's a judge on either side of the beam. So that I'm, I'm sure that they will catch that off down. Uh, I, I saw some writing going on down there. So that be the case. That was she just recovered a, well. She recovered. Flip flop layout. She was on top of that. She just didn't hold on. Jumped down. That'll be a five tenths deduction. So after hitting 14 routines in a row, the first Husky fall. Full turn. 
have a theory. She does a straddle jump with a half turn, only she's facing sideways to sideways. That's unique. Lay out, step out, immediately into another jump. She's got all her major tumbling out of the way. All she needs to do is dismount, get off the beam. Brandy dismount with a full twist. So we saw a couple breaks from the Huskies in this routine. But she had an excellent mount. And here's how it all started. Watch, she does a front somersault. Solid landing, and that is so hard. Remember the beam, four feet off the ground, four inches wide. So the seaman will obviously take a deduction for the fall. And the first slip for Washington in the meet. Now we go back to the floor. Marisa Brew. 9875. It's the first time we've seen Marisa, senior from Barlow High School, east of Portland. Clubbed at the Oregon Gymnastics Academy. Had the best meet of her career last week against UCLA. Real breakout performances on the floor and the beam. She's really come on in the last stretch for Oregon State. Her first tumbling line, a front pike into a double back pike. And she stepped out of bounds. That is a one-tenth reduction, and it comes off the average. It's called a neutral deduction. Right on the line, but the heel looks like it was definitely over. And she can be on the line and not receive the deduction, but as soon as any part of her foot goes over the line, it's a deduction. Her second tumbling line, a two-and-a-half twist, and a major fall. She was short on the twist. She'd lost where her, uh, lost her orientation and sat down. That hurt for Oregon State. One of their goals coming into this meet was no falls in counting scores. Gilson took a fall on the bars, so but that was not counted. And I think Marisa may have hurt an ankle or a foot. That could be. She's able to run off the mat, but uh, she was not the same after that first fall and may have uh, tweaked that ankle a bit. So each team takes a fall in the third rotation. And the momentum hanging in the balance right now. If Washington gets Stacy Wong, up on the beam. Uh, she has been outstanding. Our all-around leader, 19-9 through two rotations. And she had an odd fall last week in her flip-flop series and then fell on her turn sequence, which normally wouldn't be that tough. She just did really nice flip-flop back handspring. She did it to two feet. You see the gymnast will step it out. Didn't in fall this time cases. on the turn. No, it's perfect. Maybe Stacy's day. It was a nice turn. We saw her keep her leg in the air as she turned around. She had to check it a little bit, but no major break. I like her rhythm on balancing. She's quick, doesn't hesitate too much as she goes into the moves, and keeps it moving. It's usually the sign of a good balancing movement. No major break so far. She prepares to dismount. Cartwheel, Dana with full twist. Really nice exercise for Stacy. Stacy Wong has waited two years to be healthy. It's really coming on the last two weeks, and today, near perfect so far. Watch this dismount. Gainer, layout, full twist before landing. Now look for a good number from this routine. Well, and that picks the Huskies back up in the balance beam rotation. Remember the last gymnast fall? Stacy picks it back up. Now to the floor.
floor. And the Beavers finished with three very strong floor performances. Annie Campbell, 9925, just last week. Annie has the challenge now. The competitor before her fell. And Annie wants to get the scoring back up in the right direction. And this is her first tumbling pass to do that. Full, double back, full in, double back. It's an E skill, which means bonus. She nailed it, too. This is Annie's best event. She loves to complete, compete on the floor exercise. The second line, a double back. Perfect landing in the pike position. Two tough tumbling lines out of the way. All she needs to do is dance and have a good time. It's always interesting as to what music each gymnast chooses. Coach Chaplin gives them some choice in what they want to dance to. It has to fit their style, something that motivates them, allows them to express themselves in floor exercise. Remember, this is an artistic event. This is sort of acid Cuban jazz. <laughs> <laughs> but it really suits Annie Campbell. Absolutely. She had a nice exercise and pulled the Beavers back into this competition. Here's the middle tumbling run, and if the crowd sounds a little louder, well, that's that big gang from Everett here watching today. Here's Annie's middle tumbling line. She does a double back in the pike position. Perfect landing. She was high enough. Great exercise. I'm going to go back to the beam now and update you on the Huskies, and look what Stacy Wong put up. Career best, 9-9. She's got a 29-8 going in the all-around right now. But the Huskies... Two career highs, even with the fall, and two more chances. Here's Alana Apisu. 9.85 her season best. She put up a 9.925 a couple of years ago in a duel with Seattle Pacific. Got a nice, um, easy now. There's her tumbling. Good luck to lay out. We aren't seeing the Huskies put three tumbling skills in a row. All of them have done two flight series instead of three. They get their credit for it, but it's not as difficult. She's moving well. Her rhythm is good. We don't see her have major pauses in between moves. There's a front somersault. Nicely done. She was solid. Front somersault, a blind move on the balance team. You have to be right on every time. There's a jump series. She put two jumps together. The judges look for a 180-degree split in all of the gymnast leaps and jumps. Her dismount, bull twisting, somersault, front somersault. That was a solid routine. So Pisuk gives the Huskies a chance to get out of this without taking the fall. Nice dismount. She had a solid routine. Nothing spectacular, but hit every move. And they still have their best performer, Mandy Klug, coming up to wrap up the beam. Here's what the Beavers have done on the floor through this routine. Annie Campbell, a 9-9 gonna have to take that fall from Brew. So here come the best two floor performers on Oregon State. Laura Degenhardt, who has a perfect 10 in her career, did it at the 99 Pac-10 meet. That was in Corvallis. Tremendous night for Oregon State there. Season missed this year in 9.975. And frankly, last week against the Bruins, you couldn't tell me that wasn't a 10 routine. It was a great routine. Laura has springs in her legs. When she tumbles, she goes sky high. Look for the air underneath her feet or her head, whichever it is <laughs> that's turning. Now, in the first tumbling run, you know, earlier in the year, she really tried to add a lot to this and was having trouble even landing it. Cut back a little bit, and this seems to be the ultimate routine for her. She's changed her tumbling passes from the beginning of season. 
used to do a double front somersault. Now she'll do a double back somersault. First tumbling line, and watch her height. Nice. Double back pike. Laura's personality is exciting. Likes to dance and jump. Music reflects that. Very rhythmic. Her second tumbling line, a double back, again, sky high. You just can't help but clap and enjoy yourself watching Laura on Flair exercise. Her jump, jump series, it's our connect them together. She gets the special connection credit for that. Tumbling line, front layout to front tuck, nice and high. And her pizzazz at the end. Great routine for Laura. I liked it as well as last week. I was just saying, she's polishing it now. This is the third straight meet. She's uh, put this all together and it gets better and better. Here's her tumbling line. Double back, wow. high position. Look how high she is in the sky. Here's the second tumbling line. Another double back, two but double backs in the routine, way in the air. Great exercise for Laura Dagenhart. And now we will go back to the beam and close out for Washington with Mandy Tu. Now Pisa, season best 9-9 the last performance. Here's Mandy Klug, and she's the Husky leader. So that 9-9 by Apisa, and then Wong's 9-9, those are both season bests for Washington. So the, the gauntlet's been thrown down to Mandy. If they get three 9-9s, Katie Barbador for this Husky team score. Mandy just did a beautiful step-up mount into triple flight tumbling, back handspring, back handspring into a layout. Made it look effortless. She has a real mature style on balancing. And that first tells you how easy it is to fall off the balance beam on a jump or a turn. When you see it on a turn, and you're just amazed sometimes. A little concentration gets away. Concentration is a huge factor on balancing. There we saw three leaps in a row. That five tenths will hurt, deduction will hurt the Husky in this rotation. She's picked up her pace again. And now, saying to herself, let's get off the beam. Big dismount coming. Double back, but she lands. Able to finish, but you can see the disappointment. Andy Klug following a couple of great goes by Wong and Apisa. Talk about how narrow those four inches are. Here's her triple flight series. Two back handsprings into a layout position. And, you know, I think she was just thinking about the dismount and not concentrating on the rest of the routine. You do the tumble, and all you can think about is getting done. Right. Getting off. So two falls, that means Washington will have to count one fall in this rotation. Now Oregon State will finish up on the floor. A dynamic routine from Katrina Severin. Another near 10 performance against UCLA on the floor last week. And she's going to push the judges with this. Degenhardt, by the way, got a 985 for the previous OSU floor performance. Well, this is Katrina Severin's event. She's a little bit of a show-off. She is. Double oh, yeah. back pike, perfect, <laughs> out of a whip back. If she hits all of her tumbling lines, she can go 10-0 on this event. It's a beautiful routine. You just want to get up and cheer. Show a flex 
flexibility and her smile. With her middle tumbling line. Front photo, front tuck, and that was the line that cost her attempt at the last meet. So she pulls that one out perfectly. I have not seen a major break in this routine, even a minor break in this routine yet. Last tumbling line, she finishes strong. Double back tuck into an immediate, it's called a Popanova, which is a D element on floor exercise. Great routine for Katrina. It's gonna be, the judges will be hard pressed to find a deduction in that routine. Her first tumbling cast, she does a whip back, which is a handspring with no hand, into an immediate double back pike. Her pike position is perfect. Her landing is perfect. And then in her last tumbling cast, she follows with a double tuck. Got a little leg check. Maybe the judges didn't see that. But after the fall, Oregon State comes through no records, but a solid floor routine, and they are back in the team race. Every weeknight, it's totally NASCAR, only on Fox Sports Net. It is your exclusive all-access garage pass with 30 minutes of NASCAR news and highlights, plus the latest developments on what's gearing up for this week's race. Totally NASCAR, weeknights at 6 p.m., only on Fox Sports Net. And now the numbers for rotation number three. The Huskies on the beam, a 48-6-2-5 career highs for Powers and Wong, a season best for a piece hook, but they had to count a fall along the way. And for Oregon State on the floor, no records, but very, very solid. And the Beavers do not have to count a fall. So things are getting a little tighter as we go to the final rotation. Oregon State will go to the beam. They're going to have to stay on. The Huskies wrap it up on the floor when we come back. Tonight, I celebrate. Rotation to go and Washington looking for an upset, winning a dual meet against Oregon State. They have a quarter point lead, and that's, that's big. Call it gymnastics if you're not familiar. Individual all around, Stacy Wong, who has never won an all around competition has a commanding lead over her teammate, freshman Emily Pritchard, tied with Lana Apisuk, Annie Campbell, the only Oregon State all-arounder. So a great story with Stacy Wong today as we go to the final rotation. Fourth rotation, up on the beam for Oregon State. Beavers just set the school record in the beam just a week ago against UCLA. A lot of difficulty here. Or Washington on the floor. Emily Pritchard, Molly Seaman, freshman leading it off. We'll see Amy Metcalf for the first time, and then a Pisuk and Kluge will wrap it up. So very exciting here as the Beavers try to come back. They do have more difficulty on the beam, but they need to hit all these routines. Lindsey Nelson first, freshman from Colorado. Well, this meet is coming down to the balance beam event. Perfect mount. Round off into a back handspring. Oregon State cannot afford one major break on this event. Huskies, on the other hand, are floor exercise. Need to hit their routine. Could end up with an upset. Lindsay, so far so good. Here's her tumbling. Back handspring to a layout, and she has a major break and a fall. The judges will deduct five tenths for the fall, which could also deduct for the major break before that. So full turn. Not what Oregon State wanted to see for their first gymnast up. Third fall of the day, only one has counted so far. Acrobatic series, nice hold of the handstand, good show strength. Now all she needs to do is get off the beam. Have a strong dismount. Thinking 
thinking about it. Concentrating. Round off double full. She had one step on landing. Disappointing start for Oregon State and for Lindsay. Nelson, of course, injured herself on the beam in the first week of the season. Just got that event back at her repertoire. All right, you got this. Watch she expects to score well on later in the year. Talk about the Beavers setting their career best last week. The Huskies set a school record on the floor against Stanford right here at the B of A back in January. Emily Pritchard going to lead it off. Nice day for the freshman from the slopes of Mount Rainier. He's running second in the all-around. 9.825 for career best. She has some fans in the audience from her home. Seattle area also. And the Huskies known for very dynamic, creative floor exercises. Not tumbling. Front into a one and a half. It's a very powerful routine. A little James Bond. A little James Bond. Interesting finish into the back diving roll. A lot of energy and athleticism in her all of her routines, really. Here's her last coming line. A double twist. Well landed. Here we see her do a diving back somersault onto the floor. Interesting close. That closes out Pritchard on the floor. Now we go to the beam and Elaine Yoder. It's her best event. Scored a 9-8 the last three meets. 9-8 or better. Oregon State obviously cannot afford any more major breaks on this event. Every gymnast must count. Elaine is a nice step up and for a leap series, a beautiful, graceful style, suits well on this event, the Potomac series, we said earlier, the Huskies doing two flips, Oregon State putting three flips together, there was an example, nicely done, Elaine fighting to stay on that balance, and the back walk over, straddle down, to the beam shows her flexibility and her grace. I like her rhythm. Not too cautious. It flows together. There was a little check in that series. But no major break. All Elaine needs to do is dismount, get off the beam. Round off, layout with a full twist, perfect landing. That'll bring the Beavers score back up, set them up for the final four competitors on balance team. Here's the tumbling one. Here we see her flip flop, flip flop into a layout step out, nice. perfect landing. And the dismount. And her dismount, a round off, she does a full twist, laid out position, no steps on landing. Gutsy performance here for the freshman from Portland. Their club gymnastics at Creative Gymnastics in Oregon. Now to the floor, Molly Seaman, freshman. The Huskies off.
off to a good start. Emily Pritchard open with a 9.825 career best. Huskies now have 11 career best or equaling career best performances in this meet. this year on these routines. And these are freshmen with basically new routines for the first time. She opened with a double back. She had a good landing. Was nice and high. These routines are rhythmic, suiting the styles of the athletes. Sometimes when you have a freshman coming in, you're not sure what your approach will be to full exercise. You have to watch and evaluate their style. With a nice middle tumbling line, layout through to a full twisting layout. Get a little off balance on the twist, but she covered it well. Starting to get the crowd into her floor routine. Nice turn into a jump turn. Front layout, dynamic leap to finish, right with the music. Good exercise for the Huskies. They're on a roll on this event. Here's an early tumbling run. Good stuff by Molly Seen. Then Good double height. back. Get a leg separation. It's called a cowboy. You see her use the Peter Gun approach to pull the crowd into this routine. That's a good routine for a freshman to put out there. Really, both the freshmen are opening up. Bob Levesque, Huskies have to be happy with that. Going back to the beam now. And Marisa Brew, who we thought hurt her ankle on that floor routine, and I just saw her flexing it around a little bit. It's her left ankle. Took a fall on the floor. Bothering her a bit, but she's going to compete. Well, Oregon State, State needs every competitor. And they need to be able to go back to those gymnasts they counted on all season. Nice tumbling for Reese. Two flip flops into a layout, step out. Perfectly done. So her ankle's bothering her. It didn't show there. Two jumps, three jumps. She wanted to make sure she got that combination in without a break. The gymnast cannot jump and stop. They must keep it moving in order to get credit. She's hitting a nice beam routine. Her rhythm is good. Not cautious. Display of Flexibility at the beam level. You know, after you've had a major break on an event, it's hard to come back in the next rotation. You have to put that event behind you and concentrate on the next event. Good dismount. Gainer with a full twist. She had a slight step on the foot. Could be favoring the ankle just a bit. Back handspring to a gainer with a full twist. And she is finished. Now do the important thing. She got through the routine and keeps the Oregon State string going here now. Yoder and Brew kick the beam up a notch. Yoder, by the way, equaled her career high with a 9875. Now we go to the floor, and for the first time, we see Amy Metcalf, another one of the Husky freshmen over the Cascades in Yakima, Gymnastics Plus her club, Davis High School. Just competing in the floor this year, 985, her best. Well, I'm impressed with this freshman crew for the Huskies. We've seen three of them, all with good routines, and they seem well poised. Music, men in black. Double back, tight position, 
a D skill. All of the gymnasts using that for their bonus. Some dramatic floor exercise music. And their gymnasts are more athletic and presented very athletically rather than ballet style or classical style. They use that to their advantage. to another front tuck, and she was low on that tuck. That'll be a deduction. Turning jump. Again, trying to get the crowd into the routine. One of the things with freshman gymnasts is teaching them to perform in front of a large crowd. Many of them don't have that in club or high school competition. And there we saw her go out of bounds. She was out of bounds on the tumbling series and then stepped out of bounds. So there'll be a deduction for both instances. Amy had some breaks in this routine. Her tumbling line, she had a break, and then the finish. You see her opening tumbling line. A nice double back, the pike position, perfect landing, and she was nice and high. And we see her go back, final tumbling line, she does a double twist, we see her step big time out of bounds, the heel is over the line, we see the judge start to raise her hand, indicating a one-tenth neutral deduction. A very ambitious routines, and this is some of the best floor work. We see the Huskies every year, Judy, and this is some of the best innovative routines. They're great floor routines. Uh, Dana, the assistant coach, done an excellent job with the choreography. And Campbell now. The only Beaver all around her today. Up on the beam. Now Marisa Bruce scored a 9.575. Amy would like to go out strong. Had a 9.9 earlier in the year at Arizona. Annie needs to put up a good number here be in contention for that all-around position. Excellent tumbling line, triple flight series, two back handsprings into a layout, step out. She is solid. Of course, Oregon State is counting on her for a big score for the team number, too. Watch this move. Straddle leap with a full turn to get the body all the way around and keep your eyes on the beam at the same time and not fall, not to mention that. There's another nice jump with a full turn. That's where she's getting all her bonus credit, her, her leap combination. Everything's put together well. It was supposed to be a handstand. Just to check herself, doesn't really hold it long enough to get credit. Won't be a major break, she just won't get credit. Ready for that dismount. Granny with the full twist, a little short on landing, had to take a step back. So the beginning of the routine was perfect. Had a few breaks near the end of the routine, but no major fall. So Annie Campbell completes her all around day. Here's the dismount. Here we see her dismount. She does the Front somersault with a full twist. We see she's a little bit short in her rotation and has to take a step back. So Campbell, the beaver all-arounder, is done. By the way, the all-around leader now is Pritchard briefly because of her 9825. Pritchard now has a 39-3. That's career best for the freshman all-arounding. But here is the leader now in the all-around, Stacy Wong, who has had a wonderful day. different pace for a Husky floor routine. Nice opening line. Uh -oh. She did a pike into a layout position. That's an E skill on Clark's side. It's her two-tenths bonus. E is the most difficult skill you can do on floor or any of the events for that matter. And what we see from Stacy is a little more classical music than what we've heard from the freshmen. 
Nice combination tumbling, whip through to a double twist. She's a more mature gymnast. She can handle the more classical routine. That big smile, she knows she's hit so far. See her finish strong. Last tumbling line, a two and a half twist. A D element, we don't see that too often at the end of the routine. She's slightly off balance on her twist, but not a major break. She took just a little check, maybe a half a ten, maybe a ten. Here's the opening tumbling pass for Wong. Watch this combination tumbling. Double layout. Bang. Hublovac liked it. Beautiful Here's the two and a half split. twist. Round off slip flop, two and a half twist, right into the corner. What a day for Stacy Wong. Two career highs already. And she is online to win her first ever all-around competition. Even with all the injuries, still a junior. A lot of growth to come for this young lady. Here's what Oregon State has done so far on the beam. Had to take that fall from Nelson, but Ann Campbell came back nicely. The last paper performer with a 9-9. That leads us to Kat and Trina Severin. Good average this year, 9-6-6-4 and 9-9 season best. If you ask Katrina what her pet peeve is, it's falling off the beam. She hates to fall. Beautiful step-up mount. She's a tall gymnast. Long legs, very graceful, which suits her on balance beam. That was a beautiful triple flight series. She was nice and high on the layout. And when she's on on the beam, nothing's better. Nice extension, nice body position. There's her three leap jumps in a row. She's in a zone on this event. Takes a great deal of concentration to compete on balance beam. Can't let anything distract you. You have to think of each move as you're doing it. All day. Cheap jump. The E-skill. Could have let her head drop back just a little more. That's so hard to do on balance beam because it, you have to take your eyes off of the beam in order to do it. And frankly, nobody wants to take <laughs> their eyes off the beam and take a chance to fall off. You're saying this is not an event you would attempt blind? No, no. Double back. Step on landing. She was nice and high on that double back. That's a 10 0 routine. Very few execution breaks in that routine. Watch this tumbling. She's perfect. Flip flop. Will immediate layout. Step out. Looks like she's just on the floor. No big deal. Here's her dismount. Double back. She's circling down. She has to take a step back, hop back on the landing. That'll be the tenth deduction in that routine. And that's about it, though. It looks like a 9-9 nine -nine for Severin. We'll give you the number in a second. Now on the floor, here's what the Huskies have done already and another solid routine. Seaman, Wong equaling a career high with that 9-9. And now here's Lana Apisuk. Miss consistency is a 9-9-7-5 already this year. Here's a fun routine, her favorite event. Whip back through to a two and a half twist. Nicely done. Jazz. Compliment her style. She too is very athletic. And the team and the coaches getting into this routine, getting the crowd energized. Double back pike. Could have stepped out on landing on that. Got a slight off balance and had to check herself.
having a good time so far. All she needs to do is finish strong. Sounds like we're at a rock concert. Uh, you look, I'll tell you, you look through the history of Husky gymnastics and you've got to compare her with Tiffany Simpson as the most consistent gymnast ever. I mean, she's hit in every event throughout her career. Well, one thing about Lana is that she loves music, she's artistic, and in this event, it shows. Look at that last tumbling line, a double twist, perfect in, into the corner. Turning jump, she loves for That's her best event, and I'll tell you what, Washington is finishing strong. I don't want to give away the ending, but uh, this is going to be a very, very good day, and uh, if nothing else, the Huskies are going to win this dual meet. Just tremendous against a top 20 ranked team. This is what Bob Levesque wanted to see. On the beam for Oregon State, final performer, Stephanie Baikowski. And this is her special. Stephanie is solid on that. Perfect step up, man. Two jumps without a pause, no hesitation. You see how focused she is. Oregon State needs her to hit, just like Katrina. There's a side somersault, a half twist. She gets bonus for that skill. Thinking about the next tumbling series. Two flip flops to a layout step out. Perfect. Just watch her move. I like her rhythm. She's flowing nicely. There's no hesitation. Nice accent of, of moves. And she is concentrating. Nice sheep jump. Now she took her eyes off the beam, and that tells you how hard that skill is. It's an E skill. She gets bonus for it. Again, E being the most difficult. Set up for her dismount. Again, it was a full twist. Slight step on the landing. That was a beautiful routine. It's what she does best. Stephanie Baikowski up on the beam, the senior from Western Springs. Watch this tumbling line. Flip flop, two of them into a layout step out. Perfect. And her dismount, which is a gainer, kicks the leg through, full twist. Before landing, she has to take a step, maybe half tenth. Excellent routine, just excellent routine. Nice day on the bars and the beam for Stephanie Baikowski. Now we finish up the final road, a performance of the meet. Mandy Clue, team leader for the Huskies. Closing it out with a little bit of the old world. Well, you could see on balance beam that Mandy was a dancer. She has the dance training that maybe some of the freshmen don't have. Oh, beautiful nice double Arabian. Very nice, very high. That skill will give her bonus. Double turn. Definitely the Husky saving the best for last. Double back, perfect landing. She was high in the air. That jump turn is called a Copanova, named after two Olympic gymnasts. Her choice of music, different from her teammates. Her dance skill, stronger than her teammates. Flair. Last tumbling, Arabian full, through to another full twist. Beautiful exercise. We saw different tumbling in that routine than we've seen all night, and she nailed it. 
What a way to cap off this meet for the Huskies. Well, here's how it started. Here's his opening tumbling line. Watch a double Arabian front. Perfect landing. Here's her second tumbling line. A double back. Nice. And she capped it off with this tumbling move. Front one and a half. Through to a layout with a half full step up. Beautiful exercise for Mandy Klug. So both of these teams are going to get what they wanted. Big team numbers that will up the regional qualifying score. And a big day for Stacy Wong. She has set a Husky record in the all-around. So here we go for the fourth rotation. The Beavers end up with a 49-10 on the beam. And will end up with a very good team score overall. Bikowski finished with a 9.875. And for the Huskies on the floor, another big number, more career highs. And what a day for Husky gymnastics as the record book is on fire. And we got a lot to wrap up. Mandy Klug finishing with a flourish. We'll wrap it up, Huskies and the Beavs from Seattle. It's a done deal at the B of A and some record-setting performances today, especially for the Washington Huskies. That's a school record, 196.875, and Oregon State's 196.325. The Beavers' second-best team number of the year. So, Judy, both these teams got what they wanted. They improved their regional qualifying score. Huskies had a great day, record-setting performances. Absolutely. Oregon State was a little flat, but, you know, they got what they came for. They wanted to have a 196 on the road, and they got it. And, of course, in the individual competition, Stacey Wong, tremendous. First time she's ever won an all-around, and she did it with a school record in the all-around. 39-7. Remember, 40 is perfect. That was a great score, and I caught up with her and asked her a few questions. You know, Oregon State's been a big rival for us, and we came into this competition ready to go. As a team, I think we did our job, and we just pulled through. Now, what do you have to do in order to get to regionals and nationals? Um, we need to hit our routines, stay confident, and go out there and have fun. Thanks. Well, both of these teams uh, should make it into the top 20 now, and they're getting that uh, average score up. And I think they'll both make it to regionals just fine, if this is any indication. Well, I'd like to see these teams in regionals. They deserve to be there. And, of course, the Pac-10 meet coming up right here at the B of A Arena at Heck Edmondson Pavilion to uh, wrap up the season. Both teams should take advantage of that. Well, this guy is happy. Bob Levesque rewriting the record books. The Huskies equal or tie or improve on 16 school individual records. For Judy Corwin, I'm Bob Akamian saying so long from the Bank of America Arena in Seattle. The Huskies with a 196875 defeat Oregon State. You'll see both these teams in action Tuesday night, March 20th, in the Shanico Classic from Corvallis. You've been watching Pac-10 Gymnastics on Fox Sports Net. Don't forget, tonight at 11, it's your regional sports report right here on Fox Sports Net.